Hey guys, it's Julia here, and this is going to be a shorter video on simply how to fix Windows Update Error Code 0x80070643 on Windows 10. Now there is a certain KB on Windows 10 that seems to not install for some reason for most people, and it's this KB right here, KB5034441. You can see it tried to install two times and it failed with that exact error code. So you may or may not have noticed it. You can see it says it's up to date, but if I click check for updates, that problematic update is going to pop up and it's gonna try to install and it's gonna immediately fail because it's gonna try and it's just not gonna work. It's gonna give a download error, even though it says installing and then it just says download error. It's very strange, but I'm just gonna provide you a very simple fix. This is how you're gonna fix it. So Microsoft actually provided documentation which i'll put this link in the description and it tells you about how there's you know windows recovery environment updates and apparently some pcs so apparently some pcs don't have a recovery partition that's large enough to install the update therefore you need to resize the recovery partition and this tells you exactly how to do it it gives the step-by-step -step instructions i may also provide a notepad document below as well that just has all the commands in it anyways if i open disk management you guys can see that my recovery partition is 522 megabytes which is not enough to install the update so therefore we need to do some resizing so as you guys can see the update just failed with that download error which is obviously not surprising because our recovery partition is not large enough so here's what you'll need to do so you can see right now it says PowerShell, but PowerShell with admin will work as well. However, I'm just going to type CMD in the search and run it as administrator because it says to use command prompt. So first we're going to disable our recovery partition. So R-E-A-G-E-N-T-C slash disable. Now that'll disable our recovery, which is required because we're going to recreate the partition. So now we're going to shrink the main partition in order to resize our recovery. So we're gonna type disk part, list disk. Now this is important. Make sure you select the proper disk for your operating system. If you're unsure about what it is, just right click your start menu, open disk management, and then whatever your C drive is on, that's the disk. In most scenarios, it's disk zero. If you have a system with multiple drives, however, it could be like disk one, disk two, disk three, etc. I think on my computer it's disk three, but on this computer that we're showing right now, it's disk zero. And you can see it has the star for GPT, meaning that this is in GPT, AKA UEFI form. So the instructions are slightly different. So we're gonna select disk zero. So after you select the disk, you're going to list the partitions. So list part, and it'll tell you all your partitions. Now be careful in this part. You need to select your primary operating system partition. It'll be labeled as primary. So select partition three. If you have more than one primary partition, you can verify also in disk management to see which one is the C and what order it's in. So once we select our primary partition for our operating system, we're gonna shrink it. So shrink desired equals 250 minimum equals 250. So this basically shrinks it by 250 megabytes, which is what we need to do. So it's giving the recovery that extra space. Now after that, we need to select our Windows recovery partition, which will be labeled recovery. You can see it's partition four. So select partition four. After we have that selected, delete partition override. Now it's deleted. So after we deleted our recovery partition, this is where you need to pay close attention. Looking at this, if you have this, then you have GPT, AKA UEFI and, and not MBR. Cause if you have MBR, this will not show anything. This will just all be blank. But because we have GPT partition style, we are going to run this command. It's easier just to copy it just because of how long the commands are. 
So we're going to run that command to create our partition. And then afterwards, we're going to give it these attributes, which probably states that it's a recovery partition. So we have assigned it. And then now we are going to format that partition. So I'm going to copy that command as well. I tend to copy the longer commands, but the shorter ones, it's just quicker to type. So then if I do list vol, you can see that we do have our recovery partition right there. Now that we have our recovery partition, we are going to exit and then we're going to re-enable the recovery. So R-E-A-G-E-N-T-C slash enable. You can see that it's enabled successfully now. And then we're going to run that same command, do the up arrow and then slash info. So then we can see that it is indeed enabled on our recovery partition. So now that our recovery partition is enabled, we should be able to go back to Windows Update, check for updates again, and it should succeed. So if I open disk management, you guys can see that we have a 773 megabyte recovery partition now, meaning that this update should have no issues installing and it should succeed and go away and not bug us anymore. As to why Microsoft has not fixed this issue, I don't know. I feel like they should fix it because most people are unaware that this is even a problem because people don't go and check Windows Update or they don't go and check their update history. So they're completely unaware that their computer is failing to install an update. Anyways, I'm going to have another video now right after this and it's going to show how to install this update on an NBR based system. It's only one command that's different, AKA you just run this command instead of running the other two. However, I'm still gonna leave this section in the video just for demonstration purposes. However, if you know how to do it, you can you know go ahead and do it. But let's just wait for this update to install. All right, you guys can see it says we're up to date. There's no error code. We'll check up updates again just to make sure but it should be fully up to date now because the update has finally succeeded after doing that, which is awesome. So yeah, it's up to date. We can view our update history and you can see now the update is successfully installed the same problematic KB that we had. In fact, the failed attempts disappeared, which I find kind of interesting, but you can see it's finally worked. So anyways, that's how you fix it. Let's move on to an MBR system just in case. All right, guys, so I have our MBR based system. And if I open up Windows Update right now, you guys will see that it's actually wanting to install that problematic update. I'll go ahead and try it, but we know it's going to fail because if I go to my update history, you could see it already failed once yesterday. So it's obviously going to fail again today. So let's just wait for it to fail. All right, so you guys can see it failed again with the same error code. All right, so R-E-A-G-E-N-T-C slash disable to disable our recovery disk part. List disk. Why did I put list disk part? Did I not mean to put that? There we go, I fixed it. Okay, select disk zero because that's our only disk right now. List part, and you can see we do have another primary, but be sure you do the correct size of your OS. I believe in legacy, this is just different. So in our case, it's partition two, but if we want to verify that, we can just open up our disk management and that'll tell you everything you need to know. Yes, it's partition two. It even says up here as well. Well, maybe not necessarily, but you can see it's the second one. So you can see there's no star on GPT. So we know for a fact this is MBR or you could just do select part two and it makes it easier. You don't have to type the whole thing out. Um, shrink desired equals 250 minimum 250. Oops, I did not type that right. There we go. And then our recovery is partition three. So select part three, delete part override might work actually. It did. Okay, that saves us time. I believe par works as well. There's many variations you can do it in disk part in order to do this. So now this is where it's different with legacy. You'll do this command instead. I don't know why I'm copying it when it's really easy to type, but 
I mean, the format command I could type, but I want to speed up this video. So I'm just going to copy and paste it. List fall. You could see we have our recovery partition. That's 773 megabytes. Exit. R-A-A-G-E-N-T-C slash enable. And then after we do that, we could do our info again. It's just to see that it's enabled, even though most of the time it is enabled. As you can see, it tells us where it is. There we go. I reopened disk management. We have our WinRE tools. Anyways, let's check for updates. So as you can see, the update is now installing. So let's see if it works. As you guys can see, the update succeeded because it disappeared. So if I click check for updates again, it shouldn't pull any updates just like before. We should be up to date now thanks to resizing the recovery partition. Yep, we're up to date. View update history, it succeeded. That, that KB, KB5034441, it's installed now and we don't need to worry about it. I do believe this is also an issue on Windows Server because my server keeps failing to install an update. I need to investigate it, but I believe it was the same error code but a different KB. So I'm guessing that Windows Server also got this update too, and I'm guessing it's the same process as, you know, doing it with normal Windows 10. So guys, we just rebooted the machine, and if I open this PC, you can see that the drive did indeed mount. So I'm going to show you guys how to quickly get rid of this. So open CMD as admin, and it's very simple. You're just going to type mount vol the drive letter of the recovery and then slash D and as you can see it went away and it should not return I'm not sure if that's just a legacy thing because I've not had that happen on UEFI systems so if your system's MBR there's a high chance it's gonna remount so just do that command and it should go away and it shouldn't come back this also works for computers if your EFI randomly mounts because that's happened to me on my computer before and I'd have to unmount it sometimes because it would just mount out of nowhere. But anyways, that's a tip. Anyways, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Hopefully this helped you guys out if you guys are having this update error because it's just a really annoying update error. Anyways, bye-bye. That's it.